Okay, I think I'm going to stop. Okay, all right, thank you. Okay, see you later. Hello, and welcome to our session on heritage regeneration, retrofit, and resource efficiency in the built environment, coming live from the Buildings Pavilion at COP26 in Glasgow as part of the program for the Global ABC, the Global Alliance for building and construction. My name is Ewan Hislop and I'm Head of Technical Research and Science with Historic Environment Scotland and the immediate past co-chair of the International Climate Heritage Network. I'm joined online today by my colleague Katie Carter, who is Circular Economy Project Officer with Historic Environment Scotland, and Katie will be joining us from Glasgow Cathedral. In this event, we'll demonstrate the value of the historic environment and how it can play its part in achieving net zero while supporting social and economic sustainability in communities. Regeneration and retrofit avoids carbon emissions from new construction through the adaptation of historic and existing buildings in which the carbon has been already spent. Furthermore, the, the reuse and repurposing of existing buildings is resource efficient and avoids the carbon cost of material processing and transportation. As well as demonstrating the important role of existing buildings and the historic built environment in supporting climate change targets, we also want this event to connect the COP26 blue zone to the city zone. And we're going to showcase exemplar case studies of building reuse happening in Glasgow right now on our doorstep. We only have 30 minutes, so in our short session today, we're going to show you a film that demonstrates practical examples and the wider benefits of making the most of our existing buildings. Then Katie will take us into the city zone to see what an example of an, exa an example of craft skills in action. In our first film clip, we'll highlight examples of building adaptation in Glasgow City to show how buildings from our past are relevant today and for the future. Our second clip is called Materials for Repair and Retrofit and describes how many of the construction materials used in traditional buildings are inherently low carbon and natural materials and often locally sourced. And we'll hear voices from a local community on the west coast of Scotland about how the reopening of a historic slate quarry has the potential to bring jobs and young people back to a rural island community with an aging population. And we'll also look at some of the skills required for repair and retrofit and how today the resurgence of a traditional craft skills goes alongside innovation and embraces new technologies. And we feature some of the young people who are building rewarding careers, highlighting the tremendous opportunities for job creation and training, which goes hand in hand with the regeneration of our historic built environment. After the film, we have a link to Glasgow Cathedral where today, right now, there is a traditional skills demonstration event taking place where school children from around Glasgow City are having the opportunity for some hands-on learning and how traditional craft skills from the past are relevant for the future. And so let's begin and watch the film, please.
Very nice narration, nicely done. with historic and natural heritage coming together. Glasgow, like cities all around the world, is today a very real risk from climate change. And the city's heritage is no stranger to that either. There are physical climate risks that will impact the city's heritage, but at the very same time, the city's heritage is also part of the solution to the climate crisis. We're off on a walk around the city today to visit examples of historic buildings that are actively contributing to solving the climate crisis. We'll go to the Brigitte, Govan Hill Baths, Central Station and Bell Street Stables and there we'll speak to people on the ground to find out how these places are contributing to solving the climate crisis. Our first stop is the Brigitte in Glasgow city centre. Constructed in the late 1800s, the Brigitte started life as a fish market and operated until the 1970s. Abandoned for decades, the Brigitte once faced an uncertain future. Today, the building has found a new lease of life as a hub for the creative industries in Glasgow with space for visual artists and cultural organisations. It's a vital part of the city's cultural scene and an excellent example of how historic buildings can be saved for a 21st century use. We're meeting Audrey Carlin, Chief Executive of WASPs, the organisation that was responsible for bringing this building back into use. Can you tell us a little bit about the backstory of the building and WASP's involvement uh, with the Brigitte? Uh, the Brigitte was obviously built in 1873 as an exemplary hygienic market hall for Glasgow and particularly focused on the fish industry at that time and located right beside the Clyde. However, the market um, moved eventually up to the motorway network up at Block Heron in the, in the late 70s and this building became um, surplus to requirements and was earmarked for demolition. There was a campaign to save it and um, find new uses and it took about 20 years for wasps to come to the picture but it wasn't until 2009 that we were able to get the building renovated, put artist studios in it, make it wind and water tight, service it and do all the things that a fish market didn't have that made it suitable for creative people to work in. What an inspiring building, you know, every day I'm so blessed to walk in the door and think that I work here. With the Brigitte giving us an insight into how historic buildings can be repurposed and given a new lease of life, we're now off to Central Station to see an example of a place still performing its original and intended function. The next stop on our trip is Glasgow Central Station, where we'll speak to Neil Murphy from Glasgow City Heritage Trust. We'll ask Neil about the history of the station, the role it plays in the everyday life of Glasgow City residents, and we'll find out how the station is playing its part in helping Scotland meet ambitious climate change targets. Could you give us a wee bit about the history of the station and how it's developed over the 20 and 21st century? So uh, this was all to do with the competition of various um, railway companies to get into Glasgow and bridge across the river. And because the river was a harbour, that was not easy to do. So the initial station was built between 1876 and 1879, but it very rapidly proved to be too small and so it was then massively expanded at the turn of the centuries. Is the historic and architectural features of the station, is that 
Is that important to the station and its use? So it's a really impressive building from that point of view, and it's got all these kind of fantastic sort of carving pods in it. And so what they end up doing is they base the whole thing on how to kind of get people to their platform as quickly as possible, and it's how water flows through a space. And so everything is kind of curved and sinuous to try and get people to flow towards their platforms, which of course, when you have like the Glasgow Fair and everybody's leaving town to go do in the water, that's exactly what you need. What do you think the role of somewhere like Glasgow Central Station is in helping Scotland meet quite ambitious climate change targets? Well, I think it's incredibly important because it's kind of like this, this huge kind of machine that basically you know, brings in people from the surrounding area and then passes them out through the city because that whole network of train tram lines that are kind of coming into the city are all electrified, and the majority of them are, and then more are being electrified as well. It means it's a really, really low carbon way to travel. Being able to keep, retain buildings like this in a city centre location where people live, where it's easy to get to, is important than building something new. These buildings were built a hundred years ago and they're still standing. What does that tell you about sustainability? Let's build buildings that are going to last for generations and generations. Repairing, retrofitting and adapting our existing built environment is no small task. To do this, we need a reliable supply of low carbon and traditional materials. In Scotland, traditionally constructed buildings are all around us and make up 20% of our homes. They were built with materials and techniques different from those used in modern construction. Made of durable and high quality materials such as stone, slate and timber that can last for hundreds of years. And designed with passive natural ventilation using materials that are breathable and regulate moisture. Features which help to create healthier indoor air environments. It therefore makes sense to look after and retain these materials within our buildings. Using non-destructive retrofit techniques helps us to do this whilst also reducing waste and reducing the need for new materials. And when we do need to source new materials for repair and retrofit, we can choose those that are sustainably managed and extracted and are natural, long-lasting and low-carbon. Investing in and developing local supply chains for traditional materials can support this and also boost local economies and support communities. And significant carbon savings can be made with locally produced stone having a carbon footprint of up to 80% lower than stone imported from abroad. Today, we need to seize the opportunity to develop local supply chains for materials such as stone, slate, timber, hemp and wood fibre insulation in a way that is both economically and environmentally sustainable. An island on the rim of the world, in that space between slate, sea and sky, where air and ocean currents are plays of wild energy, and the light changes everything. My grandfather and older members of family have worked, worked in the quarries when they were open, so I often heard stories and it was always kind of part of the you know, just part of the landscape around hearing stories and um, a big part of, of growing up, I think, and especially in Cullipool in this end, the, the quarries are still so, so prominent. Although Ling may have had slate quarrying from about the 13th century, perhaps even earlier, on a small scale, it didn't start on to an industrial scale until the middle of the 18th century. It would be wonderful to have production back and a, and a manageable scale, it would be good. So we've always been aware, obviously, that there was a, a heritage of slating here on Ling and on the other slate islands. And uh, over the past three years, we've been working with Highlands Islands Enterprise to look at how we can re-establish the exploitation of traditional materials in Argyll. 
and Lyme was an obvious place to look and see what was possible given the history here. It would provide a natural resource for the local area that's lacking at the moment. There's lots of places that are going to need to be re-roofed and they could be roofed with natural slate that doesn't have the environmental impact of slate that's imported from all around the world. This is a small scale slate project, but I think it would it would provide jobs, which is so important for this island. Oh, I'm all for it. I think if it's going to bring more young people to the island and more houses, that's great. The island, uh, you know, it's uh, it's not it's not all a museum. It's a working island. We need to have younger people here to uh, take us into the future. people to maintain, repair and retrofit our historic buildings. Innovative skills that focus on low carbon retrofit, designing out waste and pollution and enabling new technologies for low carbon heat and power within traditional buildings. But to do this, we must carry on the traditional craft skills of our ancestors, including stonemasonry, joinery, slating and plastering. Here in Scotland, there is a skills deficit. Many of our traditional craft skills and the knowledge that goes with them is being lost. It is estimated that Scotland needs to recruit more than 20,000 workers by 2028 in order to deliver the improvements to our existing buildings needed to allow us to reach net zero emissions. So we need to invest in skills, create opportunities for young people to choose skilled career paths and work with education providers and businesses to ensure that there is on-the-job training that links traditional skills with the new skills we need to reach net zero in the built environment. The best part for me is when I get to cut stone. <laughs> I lose myself in it and I just, you know, I love it. I forget about everything else. And, you know, just the rhythm of the chisel hitting the stone is, is magical to me. My name is Lara Townsend. I've been working with stone for eight years now as a stonemason, stone carver and letter cutter. I run my business Rock Paper Chisels from my home and also workshop in Edinburgh, although I travel all over the UK for work. I really liked the idea that I was helping to contribute to heritage and keeping that for future generations, but also that I was learning a trade and a skill. I think stone masonry is an amazing career for young people. It's great if you enjoy working with your hands. It's also a wonderful job to do if you're interested in traveling because there's skill shortages all around the world and there's many places that need those skills. It's also great if you want to stay in Scotland or elsewhere in the UK. In Scotland, we have so many old buildings that need repair work. And there's also lots of new builds that need cladding and other uh, work that needs done, even just rebuilding walls. I applied for the Stone Masonry Apprenticeship with Historic Environment Scotland. I went through the interview process and got the job. I was based at Glasgow Cathedral, although we, diff we worked on other monuments as well, and I went to college in Stirling. I chose to do the extra level, which was advanced craft, in my third year, and then you need to spend the fourth year doing your apprenticeship to become time served, as well as passing your skills test. Getting to work on Glasgow Cathedral, was a dream. It's an amazing building and I was lucky enough to be there at a point when we were doing some very interesting tracery cutting. There was two gargoyles cut during my time there as well and I managed to get a craft fellowship in stone carving also with Historic Environment Scotland. Then when I was finished that I managed to get a Queen Elizabeth Scholarship Trust Award to do stone carving and letter cutting. And now my own boss and I can offer people stone masonry skills, letter cutting and stone carving. I absolutely love my job. And one of the best things about it is that I get to leave my mark in history.
Thank you very much. Uh, and I hope, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed that film and that helped demonstrating the value of the historic built environment um, in terms of achieving um, our climate change objectives. What we're going to do now is go to Glasgow Cathedral where today, um, this morning, there's been a traditional skills demonstration taking place with school children from, from around Glasgow city, uh, having the opportunity for hands-on learning. Um, I'm going to go live now to Katie Carter, who's at the cathedral in the sunshine. And Katie, can we just hand over to you, please? Katie, we don't have sound for you. I think your sound is switched off. We can't hear you, Katie. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. I'll start again. Hi, everybody. My name is Katie Carter. I am from Historic Environment Scotland. Today, I am live from Glasgow Cathedral. We are in a skills taster event, um, and this is where we have pupils from across Glasgow trying out some skills such as stonemasonry, joinery, painting and decorating, and slating. And these skills are absolutely crucial to help us repair, maintain, and upgrade our existing buildings. And it's very, very much part of the solution to the climate emergency. I'm gonna take you on a quick walk, show you what's going on here today, and hopefully have a chat to some of the students as well. So, over here we've got some painting and decorating. Hi everyone. Can I just see what you're doing here? I'm going to head over to joinery where we've got some making a door and a slash and paste window as well. Hi everyone. Hi. What are you up to today? Uh, making a door. Making a door. Yeah. And I'll head over to the slating. This bit's a bit loud, so it might be a bit chaotic. So they're addressing slates and then adding it to this wall behind me. And last but not least, we've got stone masonry. Uh, these are our masons from the cathedral, so they look after the cathedral behind me. Uh, and they're just here. So really all happening today and we're here all today and tomorrow so please drop by everybody's welcome to come and have a go and that's all for me and I'll hand back over to you and thanks very much. Thank you Katie. Thank you Katie. Fantastic. Well done to you and your amazing team.
and all the participants out there in the sunshine at Glasgow Cathedral. Well, we've shown you today that the historic environment is part of the solution, that heritage buildings are valued and long lasting, they're repairable and adaptable, they're well designed and can be repurposed, they can support better health and well being through the use of natural materials. We've seen that the historic built infrastructure provides key resources relevant to the future, situated in the heart of cities and communities, that they are constructed from low carbon and natural materials, and that their retrofit can support green jobs and provide local economic opportunities through the creation of local supply chains. And finally, the historic environment can support climate justice through community empowerment and driving local investment in skills and local jobs. We hope you've enjoyed this event to showcase the role of heritage in regeneration, retrofit and resource efficiency. Um, if you'd like to see more examples of regeneration of heritage buildings in Glasgow, then look up the brand new online heritage trail on the Sustainable Glasgow Story Map. The easiest thing is just to Google Sustainable Glasgow Story Map and you'll find that. If you'd like to join us in the sunshine at Glasgow Cathedral, you can. The traditional craft skills taster events are taking place today and tomorrow in front of the cathedral from 9.30 till 3 p.m. And next week on the 11th and 12th of November, we have a low embodied carbon retrofit insight tour of Holyrood Park Lodge in Edinburgh, which is directly outside the Scottish Parliament. And on the same days, Thursday and Friday next week, we're holding a conference on circular economy, retrofit and renewables in the historic environment in Edinburgh in the repurposed Old Lauriston Fire Station. You can find out more about these events um, if you visit the Culture at COP website, that's cultureatcop.com, and you'll get all the details. Thank you for joining us in our session today. If you'd like to contact us, please get in touch with our email address, which is climatechange@hes.scot. And we hope we've convinced you that the historic environment is part of the solution. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs>